Okay, welcome back. Now we come to the next demo and it's also a really good problem. I go back to that 60-30 degree triangle that I did in the previous example and now I'm going to ask a little bit different question. I'm going to say the beam of light that is coming, right, if it's like this, you see how the beam of light comes and it bends and it comes out, right, it comes out from this end. Now if I start rotating this beam of light, I could make the angle such that when this one goes this way, it will not even come out. It will glide along the surface. After that, it's going to do mainly reflect. So I'm testing the concept of total internal reflection, right? So let's turn off the lights. Okay, so now if we go like this, you see how the beam of light goes into the prism, right? Into the triangle, then it bends inward, then it bends outward, right? It bends outward, so it's basically going into the prism, then it's coming out, right? So now if I start bending it, bending it, bending it, you see here, it, now it's still coming out, but at a certain particular orientation, comes in like this, you see here, how it's coming out? Now if I angle it a little bit more, you get primarily reflection. So now let me actually draw the outline so I found out experimentally that when the line is coming at that angle, like this, right, then it's bending inward, then it's glazing along the surface here, glazing along the surface. And then if I bend it any more than that, then you only get reflection, and this is the concept of total internal reflection, right? Any angle greater than that. Right? So then, let's measure this angle from the horizontal, like this. This is the experimental angle that I found. Then I'm going to do the calculation, the theoretical calculation, right? It's going to be... Okay, it comes out to be about 20 degrees. Again, uh, it's hard to make up my mind. About 19 to 20, okay? So... 19 to 20 degrees. So now let's answer the question theoretically. If a beam of light is coming uh, into a triangle that's a 60-30 degree triangle, right? This is 60 and this is 30. How do we calculate what angle you need here? What minimum angle you need? Because any angle greater than that will cause total internal reflection. What minimum angle it needs to have, right? Theta minimum. In order for you to experience total internal reflection from the other end of the prism, right? So then, uh, how do we do this uh, theoretically? So you draw the triangle, okay? So you say this beam of light is going to come with a certain theta incident. Then it's going to bend inward at a certain theta refracted, right? Then over here, we want this angle to be equal to the critical angle required for total internal reflection. That angle needs to be equal to the theta critical, right? Theta critical, and then I want it to glaze, I want it to graze the surface at 90 degrees, right? So what was the concept for total internal reflection? Uh, N of the incident medium times sine of theta critical is equal to the N of the air times sine of 90. So N of air, which is 1, sine of 90, which is also 1. So uh, N of the incident median is 1.52, sine of theta critical is 1. So you do 1 divided by 1.52. So that's this angle. So from there, how can we work backwards to predict what this angle is, right? Now I'm going to focus on this triangle. Let me shade this triangle in like this. You see, that's going to be our clue. So focus on that triangle like this. There's a good bit of geometry here, okay? So then if this is theta critical is 41, what is this angle, right? That's gonna be very crucial. Theta critical is 41. So that angle is gonna be 90 minus 41, right? Which is gonna be what? Uh, 49, 49 degrees, right? <coughs> so then what is this angle? Well, this was a 60, 30 degree angle and the 30 degrees was at the top, right? So this is 30. So what is this kind of angle gonna be? Well, 180 minus 30 minus 49, right? So 180, that angle is gonna be 101. 
right? So this whole angle is 101. But now I can subtract this piece of it. This is 90 degrees, right? Subtract 90 from 101, I get 11 degrees. So this piece here is 11 degrees, okay? So you see what bit of geometry went in there? So you first start out by the condition for to have critical angle. You calculate this angle for the beam of light to graze the surface, right? You get, get this, then you get that. Then you go to the 30, then you calculate that. You subtract from 90, you get this piece. Now there's one more step left. So now focus on the original incident beam of light and the surface, and then the refracted beam of light. So now we got that this one here is 11 degrees, right? So this is 11, right? And then we want to calculate this, theta incident, the original incident angle. So then I can apply Snell's law, right? So then I can say um, N incident sine of theta incident equals N refracted sine of theta refracted. The incident, the original incident medium is air, sine of theta incident, and then the theta refracted is going to be the glass, 1.52 sine of, and then theta refracted is going to be the 11 degrees. Right? So, very neat problem, right? 16.8 degrees, so about 17 degrees. So, theta incident theoretical is 17 degrees. And then when I did the experiment, I got uh, about 19 to 20 degrees. So I'm off about two or three degrees, but that's fine because I didn't do it very exact. Uh, you have to do this on a really good uh, paper. Make sure you're using a sharp pencil, measure all your angles correctly. So I'm about two degrees off, but I'm very, very close. So you can see how to approach this kind of problem. It's again, uh, an application of some good geometry, but also application of the concept of total internal reflection and the equation for the theta critical, okay? Thank you very much.